Hi everyone, it's your favourite Atomic Blonde here. So here in the UK over the weekend, we've had yet another heat wave and it was ridiculously hot. So what does any uh, sensible British person go do? That's right, we go to the pub garden. But before that, I made a stop off at the local cinema to go see Bullet Train. Uh, I took a friend with me. Um, I've heard good things, but we often hear good things these days. They don't quite come to pass. But anyway, this film, oh, I loved it. Um, I basically, me and my friend both loved this film. Uh, we had a smile on our faces from start to finish. Um, it's just sort of nonstop. It's, uh, it's funny. It's silly. It's action packed. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Like it really is what it is. You know, um, it's kind of um, Deadpool meets Guy Ritchie meets... Quentin Tarantino is the only way I can try and explain it. It's based on a, a Japanese book. So there is, a, as, as ever, in this day and age, there's a bit of controversy around it because the, the main characters have, uh, uh, all the hitmen in it or women uh, have been swapped to Western characters. I mean, obviously not having read the original, I, I, I don't know if they're anything like how they're portrayed in that. But it kind of makes sense, you know, for, for this film. Um, I think one of the comments was it puts Asians in a bad light. I couldn't disagree more. I think, you know, the um, antagonist is a, a Western, white Western person. All the hit people are Western people. Um, and if anything, sort of heroes towards the end of the film, the you know, are, are Asian. So uh, I'm sure there's more nuance to the argument. I haven't actually really read what it said, but I just saw sort of headline today. I thought this was really disappointing because this is a fantastically fun film. Um, I don't see it taking the mickey out of Asian culture at all. Um, it's set in, uh, obviously it starts off in Tokyo and they're on the bullet train and they're heading to Kyoto. And all the action basically takes place on this train over the course of however many hours it takes to get from to Tokyo to Kyoto. Um, there's going to be a few light spoilers, but I'm not going to go into massive detail because when, when I really love something, I don't like to spoil it too much because I really want people to go watch it. And if I tell you everything that happens, why would you go watch it? So um, we kind of start off um, in, a, in a hospital. There's a, there's a father um, standing at the, the foot of a, a bed and there's a young boy, probably like eight or nine, laying in the bed and hooked up to ventilators in a really, really bad way. So the film starts quite somber. Um, the father's obviously uh, just distraught, he's sort of beside himself. Um, and then the grandfather arrives um, and sort of lets all like, like, where were you um, when this happens? And it basically transpires that the kid was pushed off the top of a department store. Um, I know, you know, Andrew, I thought you said this was a comedy. <laughs> it is, trust me. Um, so it kind of goes from that so um we don't know why this kid's been pushed off how the father and the grandfather involved at this point but then it switches to brad and uh, he's walking through tokyo and you've got <laughs> um staying alive in the background in japanese which is amazing and he's on the phone to his handler and we basically find out his code name is the, the ladybug because ladybugs are lucky um, and he's basically going, this is like his first job back. He's got this issue that he's like bad luck and he's like a bad luck magnet. Um, and he's not been working. He's been seeing a the therapist and he's trying to get more zen, more chilled and trying to sort his karma out. Um, which made you know, sort of strange career for someone, you know, doing these kind of jobs if you want good karma. But anyway, there's a couple of flashbacks um, where he's explaining what's what happened on the last job. And uh, it's, it's like right there taking pictures of like, it looks like someone's like some sort of scandal or having an affair or something. And then the bellhop from the hotel he's outside of just like what, goes to delete himself and jumps off the building, hits the car that Brad's in. Um, and then he basically, as he's telling the story, you sort of see him driving along and the bellhop's still on the top of the car kind of coming through the, the sunroof. And uh, you hear the hand going, yeah, but, you know, you got him to hospital and he lived, so it's not all bad. So it's very sort of tongue-in-cheek, quite some, some dark humour there. Um, but it's sort of just telling a few stories as to why he thinks he's, he's so unlucky. So um, he's on this job because somebody else was picked for it, Carver, um, and that's kind of important. But he phoned in sick. <laughs> and again, he's like, this 
we don't phone in sick. These aren't the kind of jobs you can phone in sick for. Like, what the hell? And like, hey, and he was picked over me. And like, basically, like, he's a douche. He doesn't like this guy at all. Um, and so anyway, he's got this, all it is is like a, a, a snatch and grab. And he's just got to get on the train, steal a, steal a briefcase and get off at the next stop. That's, that's it. That's all he's got to do. And he's like, yeah, I can do that. So he gets on the train um, and uh, scopes out what he needs to do quite quickly, um, finds the case and uh, thinks he's all good. He's just going to get off at the next stop. Um, he goes to get off at the next stop and then uh, a Mexican guy in this sort of really white elaborate suit with all, looks like blood down it, but it turns out to be like blood and red wine all over it, uh, just comes in and starts attacking him. <laughs> and he's like, whoa, what the hell? You know, um, and this guy's the wolf. And then, you, like, so for each of the, it transpires as several hit people on this train. And as you're introduced to them, there's sort of flashbacks to previous jobs or why they're there. And it gives you their names. It's all done really well. So the wolf um, was getting married, um, you know, to the love of his life. And he... Um, just finished the ceremony, about to sit down to reception, and someone knocks him and says, spills red wine down his white suit. He goes off to, to try and clear the wine off, and then he hears all this noise and commotion. He goes running back to the wedding party, and everybody's, like, bleeding and hemorrhaging and puking up blood everywhere. And basically the whole wedding party is killed, and his wife's obviously killed, and he's, like, he's sworn to get revenge, so he's, like, this these people, you know, because he's, he's a, obviously a... Uh, a, a gangster in, in Mexico, like find out who did this. And he basically gets told he's on his train and he's after Brad Pitt. So he goes to stab him or he stabs him, but then it literally goes through his phone, Brad's phone. And this is it. So the whole thing is like he feels he's got this awful bad luck, but then lots of things happen to him through the course of the film, which are just fluky good luck. So he goes to stab him and he gets his phone. And that's like the first thing that we see. Meanwhile, all this is kind of going on we get introduced to Lemon and Tangerine, who are twin brothers. Um, I'm just laughing because they're twin brothers. One's white, one's black. And for me, they are the highlight of the film. They are absolutely brilliant in this film. I mean, Brad's great. You know, he's very good at comedy. But Lemon and Tangerine, you just love them by the end of the film. Um, their, their relationship, their dynamic is fantastic. And Lemon... And they're basically, we find out, and they just they always just refer to each other as brothers. They don't explain whether they're step brothers, half brothers, adopted brothers. They don't say, they just are. Um, and you see a flashback to them being kids. And when they do any flashbacks of their previous jobs and they're murdering people, um, I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles is playing. And for those that don't know, that's the sort of song for West Ham football team in here in the UK. Um, and it's an East London club, so they've come from the East End, and that's their sort of theme tune. Um, and Lemon, <laughs> he's world outlook, got everything he knows about people and how to read people and trust people and sum up a situation. He's all through Thomas the Tank Engine, uh, which is a, a kids' show here in the UK. It was originally books and then made into a, a show like sort of real model trains and stuff and narration was done by Ringo Starr it's quite famous and uh, I thought they, they think they've brought it back recently um so he'll be it's basically sitting there explaining who people are well this person's a Gordon this person's a Percy and if you're a really bad person or just deceptive person you're Diesel and his brother's just like so he keeps bringing up and his brother's just like you bring up Thomas Tank Engine one more time and I'm going to shoot you in the face and this is like the dynamic of their relationship is brilliant. And he, Lemon comes across as a bit sim or a bit innocent, it's simple because it's Tom and the Tank Engine stuff. But actually, he's the first one that kind of clicks that something else is going on on this train. There's more to it than just Brad coming on and, and stealing the case. So they're basically on the train as they've been hired by the White Devil, who's like the biggest sort of accuser. Uh, mob boss in Tokyo he's sort of legendary his violence is legendary they tell a story how uh, a woman owed him some money she got all the money but she delivered it five minutes late so he basically cuts all her fingers off a minute for each minute that she's late 
and other people like they, they you know haven't done like they chops their arms off and stuff so this is a very dangerous person to to be dealing with they basically his son got into some trouble they were hired to get the son and the ransom money back which they do now brad's on the train he's taken the case with the ransom money in who's just been attacked by the wolf with the mexican so they get this phone call from one of the white devil's people saying they're just checking in. Do you have everything? And like, yeah, the boy's here. We've got that. We've got the case. Um, we're on track. And they're like, okay. And they basically check in with them periodically through through the, uh, the journey. Um, and oh, Tangerine says to Lemon, okay, well, where is the case? He's like, oh, I stashed it. And he's just literally put it with all the other bags that you do on trains. So he goes, well, go check it. So he goes, finds the case he's missing. So he Brad's got it. Um, and this just starts a series of events from this point onwards. Um, they go looking for the case. Um, and various things happen while they're looking for the case. When they come back, the son's now dead. He's got all blood pouring out of his eyes and he's dead. And they're like, right, we're screwed. We're screwed. You know, the white devil is going to kill us for sure. And they're like, well, maybe it won't be so bad. At least we can give him his money back. It's not our fault. His son's dead. We didn't kill him. Um, so basically, it's up to the ante for them to, to, to get the case back. And as I say, where Lemon's a little bit more astute, that he's like, there's something more going on here. Because initially they think, you know, um, they, they're kind of asking around. They get a description of Brad's characters and who had a case. And they get this off this girl. She's the prince. Now, this transpires that she pushed the kid of the department store. So you, she's a young girl, but a complete psychopath. She sent a note to the father saying... I'm going to be on the train in this seat, blah, 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 more or less come and get me. The father turns up on the train, obviously with a plan to kill her. Um, she's then sent um, a, one of her men to the hospital, who's literally sort of outside the son's room, and she's like, if he doesn't get a call from me every 10 minutes, he's going to kill your son. And she basically wants to use him to get to the white devil to kill the white devil. And he's like, well, why me? I don't know the white devil. She goes, yeah, but, you know, you work for someone who works for someone who works for someone who works for the white devil. So now we've got a tie-in with a lemon and tangerine to the white devil. This girl's trying to kill the white devil. Um, Brad's got the case of the ransom money that belongs to the white devil. Um, and it's kind of how the film evolves. And then other characters are brought in. You've got the Hornet, who's another hit person. Um, and... Uh, She's after the case because she's been told that's her payment for her for the job that she's pulled. <clears throat> so she's trying to get the case. So she ends up fighting with Brad Pitt. And there's a bit when they're fighting where he gets um, some uh, snake anti-venom injected into him. Again, he feels he's really bad luck, but he, this accidentally happens. And, you know, he ends up getting bitten by a snake later on. <laughs> it all explains itself. Um, but obviously he doesn't die. So all these kind of lucky thing kind of happened to him in bad situations um and obviously there's all this interaction between all the characters all these different hit people on the train and they're basically picking each other off one by one but it all kind of centers around this 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 white devil um and then what we find is the the, the father that's being used by the prince her his father the boy's grandfather also ends up on the train um and it transpires that he was part of the accuser. He was working his way up the yak at the ranks. He was almost like second in command to the, the, the head guy. But this guy from Russia, uh, I think they say Russia, yeah, Russia or Eastern Europe comes in and basically sort of ousts him um, and he warns his boss against him. But um, and he was right because he basically double crosses the accuser boss. Um and uh um, kills him and takes over his organization. Um, and this guy's kind of banished from the organization. Um, so again, he's got a connection to the white devil and he's out for revenge because the white devil not only killed the accuser, head of the accuser and his men, but their families, but obviously his son managed to escape. So we've got all these threads all, all going back. Um, and then obviously towards the end it, it's very, i'm trying not to give away too many spoilers but it all culminates with the white devil and it all gets explained why they're all on the train and and what needs to happen um and then there's a spectacular 
action scene at the end there's all this fighting going on the train crashes and derails and there's some very funny stuff as it's crashing you've got brad pitt flying through the air in slow-mo and getting hit in the head with objects and all these kind of things but again he talks about all this bad luck but you know so it does survive the crash at the end which is kind of this is like something you have to you know uh, suspend some disbelief that some of the fights and things and people are still alive and surviving this, this train crash is just ridiculous but it all works within the context of the story. There's so much humor in this. I mean, it is quite, some of it's quite dark humor. Um, but if you like things like Deadpool, this is gonna be like your sense of humor right up your street. Like I say, it's sort of silly, fun, but there's a real sort of, there's a, there's a proper storyline running through it. Um, there's just lots and lots of action and fighting. It was great watching it in the cinema and hearing other people laughing. But what was great is like, there's a certain fights and things that happen. It's just people going, oh, ah. Oh, you know, you're literally feeling the blows as there's all these fights going on with, you know, samurai swords and fighting and stuff. Um, yeah, it was a great, a, a great, great comedy action film, I thought. Um, just loads and loads of fun. Um, you know, if you like things like, say, if you like, if you like Deadpool, if you like Guy Ritchie films, if you like things even like um, From Dusk Till Dawn, that sort of sense of humour, very sort of dark but funny. You, know, you think, should I really be laughing at this? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I, it was just out and out fun, and I really, really enjoyed it. My friends really enjoyed it. And it's one of those, you know, you come out with this, like, your, your cheeks are actually hurting because you realise you've been smiling the whole way through. Um, yeah, we came out, absolutely loved it. Uh, the 4K is out for pre-order, so I'm already going to be ordering that because I can't wait to see this film again. And I'm sure there's lots of things in there that you probably missed, but it's great. All this, also, all the storyline ties together. You understand why the rule on the train and how it all plays out and how all these characters interact. There's some great cameos in this as well. Just a couple of good cameos. Chan and Tatum is hilarious. You know, he's barely in it, but the, the lines he has are just hysterical. And there's a and there's a very quick cameo of uh, Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds, you sort of blink and you'll miss him. I don't think he's even credited in the film, but uh, he's kind of the, the the reason for Brad Pitt's woes, <laughs> as we find out. So um, so yeah, I mean, I definitely give this like um, I don't know, eight eight or nine out of ten. I would say um, just just great fun, just really really good fun. You know, um, you can kind of leave your brain at the door, but like, so you have to kind of think about it enough because if there's this, this thread and you're trying to guess who, who these people are. But you can just sit back with your popcorn and enjoy. I do recommend you seeing this film. Um, I mean, for, for some of the action and certainly the train crash at the end, I mean, I'd always recommend trying to get to the, the movies if you can, um, especially when it's like 35 degrees outside as it was here in the UK. Um, but yeah, de definitely try and get to see this film if you're not able to go. But do do try and catch it when it comes on to streaming. Um, just just really good fun, and you don't get enough fun films, I don't think anymore. Um, you know, this film really doesn't take itself seriously, um, which is great. It's serious enough that it's like you know, there's there's enough you know seriousness to hold the film together. But just how the characters play out and some of the lines, it's, it's just brilliant. So, yeah, I definitely recommend this film. Do go and see it if you get the chance. And I will be reviewing further stuff on my channel. Um, obviously, there's at the moment, there's a review for Prey. There's uh, The Sandman, um, Resident Evil. <clears throat> and obviously, my, my uh, weekly roundups of things I've been watching. So... Um, if there's something you want me to review, um, do let me know. You can put it in the comments. Um, but do like, share um, uh, the, the video if you like it. Um, if you don't like it, do, do leave me some constructive criticism. Um, obviously, it's quite a new channel. Happy to have your feedback as to what you like and what you don't like. But anyway, so that's it for Bullet Train. Do go see it. Have fun and take care. Bye.